Hello, my name is Alex McKinney. And my name is Maya Nardi, and this is Game of Thrones. Welcome to episode 16, The Legacy of Modern Monarchs Following the Rise of Republicanism. Before we begin, just a reminder that our CD has been released, and you can find it at your nearest chapters or Indigo, as well as on our website, www.gameofthronespodcasts.com. Podcast merchandise will also be available on our website. There has been a question that has circled humanity for centuries, and this podcast is an attempt at answering the unanswerable. What is the superior form of government? We will be investigating the reasons for the successes and failures of the monarchies of Europe and examining the missteps which led to the ultimate demise of certain European monarchies will do so effectively. We will examine successful modern-day monarchs in Europe to assess why monarchies remain such an admired structure of government, looking all the way back to the rise of republicanism. The rise of the Republican movement, which swept across Europe in the 19th and 20th centuries, can be held accountable for the demise of certain monarchies which were unwilling or unsuccessful at adapting to the ever-changing needs of European society or the flourish of those which did. So what is Republicanism? Republicanism is an ideology of being a citizen in a state as a republic rather than a dictatorship, under which the people hold popular sovereignty. So would you like to hear the good news first, or the bad news first? Let's get it over with. The bad news. One of the most memorable collapses of a European monarchy was that of the Russian Empire. The dissolution of this empire began years preceding its legitimate collapse. Prior to 1905, the empire was an absolute monarchy run by the Romanov family. However, the revolution of 1905 left the country in governmental disarray, which resulted in the empire's transition to a constitutional monarchy. Russia attempted to adhere to its people's needs, yet these efforts were merely superficial. This became evident in 1914 when Russia mobilized and joined the war effort. In the years following Russia's joining of World War I, the country realized their troops were no match for the advanced weaponry of the German army after an estimated 800,000 Russian soldiers were killed between 1914 and 1915. This motivated Tsar Nicholas II to delve into his duties and transfer himself from St. Petersburg to the war front, leaving Empress Alexandra to rule the nation. This decision to move to the front also put all war failures on Nicholas II. It was during this time when Russia's trade ties were severed and the people suffered from the currency increase and the food and fuel shortages which shook the country, resulting in the uprising of the people in the February Revolution of 1917, which eventually led to the absolute dissolution of the Russian Empire. The prioritization of the war over its people's individual and human rights was immensely apparent. While we're on the topic of impressive failures, I'd like to explore the story of the Ottoman Empire. The Ottoman Empire had an immensely successful rule in the sense that it lasted for a period of approximately 600 years. However, commencing in 1908, its tragic demise began. In 1908, Bulgaria declared independence from the Ottoman Empire, resulting in the dramatic decrease of the Ottoman's power. Besides this, Austria-Hungary's annexation of Bosnia and the Ottomans' pitiful loss to Italy in a war over the possession of Libya ended their 340-year presence in North Africa in 1912. The commencement of the First Balkan War resulted in Albania's independence, and Britain's annexing of Cyprus limited the Ottomans' rule to Istanbul. It was after this embarrassing loss of control in 1915 when the Ottomans initiated their forced deportation and eventual execution of the Armenian population. Over one million Armenians were removed from their homes and deported, while half a million more perished. This caused outrage in the European community and resulted in the proposal of the Treaty of Sevres, which essentially abolished Turkish sovereignty. This treaty led to the demolition of the monarchy by the government of the Grand National Assembly and was replaced by the Republic of Turkey. The Ottomans and Russians' inability to effectively adapt to the ideals of republicanism and constitutional monarchies resulted in their inevitable downfall. So are we concluding that all monarchies are bad? Of course not! The presence of successful monarchies in Europe is still extremely recognized. However, the means by which they exhibit and implement their power differs from the old monarchical structures of Europe. It is the way by which they enact their power that proves monarchies can continue to thrive and succeed in the present day. A widely recognized example of a positive, effective monarchy in Europe is Britain. 
The British Crown has found success for a variety of reasons, but most importantly because they adopted a constitutional monarchy and effectively implemented it within British society. Britain transitioned from an absolutist reign to a constitutional monarchy in 1721 when the first Prime Minister, Sir Robert Walpole, was appointed. Whether or not it was intentional, Britain was able to foresee issues which could arise in regards to the rights and freedoms of their people. The Netherlands share very similar characteristics as Britain in regards to their ability to foresee the rise of republicanism, whether it be deliberate or not. They made a structural and societal change for the people, and by doing so, gave them greater expansion of rights, adhering to the people's needs before they were made aware that those needs existed. The success of the Netherlands is deepened even further due to the fact that King Willem Alexander holds little true political power. He is a symbolic leader who brings the country together through their divided politics. Therefore, there is no sole head of state, but many. Both Britain and the Netherlands somehow foresaw the rise of republicanism prior to its transformation into a widespread movement, and rightfully acted upon it in an effective manner, ultimately leading to their survival. The successful survival of these monarchies prove that adapting to new ideals such as republicanism ultimately leads to a longer, positive reign which attests to be fair for all. However, the rise of republicanism itself shaped many governmental structures around the world focusing on individual independence and the right to political opinion. This is again evident through the leadership styles in both the Netherlands and Britain in present day. Today, Queen Elizabeth II of England and King Willem Alexander of the Netherlands have ceremonial and symbolic power over their countries. Yet, the supreme power rests in the hands of government officials such as the Prime Minister. This is particularly effective seeing as most of their responsibility falls to the Prime Ministers, as does the blame for any societal issues or poor decisions made by the country. This ensures that the king or queen's image remains untainted and therefore they will always be looked upon with the utmost respect from their people, reducing the risk of any upheaval. Republicanism has proven to be an impactful aspect of remaining a prosperous monarchy and ultimately a governmental structure, for its ideals are applied on a global scale. It has taken humanity centuries to discover the worth of republican principles through failures and successes demonstrated in Europe. It can be concluded, monarchies would be extinct if not for the necessary adaptation to constitutional monarchies brought forth by republicanism. So, is it plausible to state that there is one superior governmental structure? This is impossible due to the fact that the world is ever-changing and the needs of people change along with it. So perhaps there is no definite answer. For at one point in time, the superior government was an absolute monarchy. It could be argued that democracy is today's and no one knows what will reign superior tomorrow. This has been Game of Thrones. Thank you for listening.